two of the premier coaches in Bobby Bowden and Tom Osborne. So sit down and relax. It's time now to join Charlie Jones and Jimmy Cephalo in Tempe, Arizona. Charlie. Thanks, Gail. And on behalf of all of us, I would personally like to welcome you to the NBC Sports family. And I hope your stay here is very long and very prosperous. Happy New Year. 1988 is going to be a great year here at NBC. And we start it all here in Tempe, Arizona, with the 17th edition of the Sunkiss Fiesta Bowl. It will be number three, Florida State University, the Seminoles, against number five, the University of Nebraska Cornhuskers. Joining me on the telecast, Jimmy Cephalo. Charlie, I'm really looking forward to this afternoon's game. It features two high-powered offenses. Florida State can score two ways, with quarterback Danny McManus or with running back Sammy Smith. On the other side of the ball, Nebraska is going to run it. They can do it with two very talented performers, quarterback Steve Taylor or with running back Keith Jones. It should be a very high-scoring afternoon. Tom Osborne, the head coach of the Cornhuskers of Nebraska in his 15th season. And Bobby Bowden of Florida State, the head coach of the Seminoles. And, of course, the two quarterbacks will be leading these offenses. For Nebraska, it'll be Steve Taylor that you were talking about and Danny McManus for Florida State. Now, Florida State has won the toss. They have elected to receive. And that means that Chris Drennan will be kicking off for Nebraska. The weather, a bit on the cool side. It's been that way all week long. 49 degrees, the wind at 5 miles per hour. The forecast is partly sunny. We're in the desert, and it is, a, in reality, perfect weather for football. You wanted it just a little bit on the cool side. Yeah, just a tiny bit. It's uh, probably better that way for the club. Is the field, Charlie, there's some, some question about it. There was a concert held here about a week ago, and... We could say it. It was a U2 concert. That's right. They <laughs> sold it out for two nights. They did, two nights in a row, but it had some effect on the field. Some of the players felt that it was a, a little beaten up, but the weather was dry all week, and that's helped the, the, the field this afternoon. And the reason that I could say we could say it because I had to ask you what a U2 concert <laughs> was. <laughs> it was Chris Drennan to kick off for Nebraska, and the deep backs on the return for Florida State. Number 13 is Dexter Carter. Number 20, Keith Ross. And number 20, Ross. The referee, Wendell Shelton. High spinning short. It is dropped to scramble and then picked up. By Dane Williams, the ball pops loose, but the play. was there for the Seminoles and a semi-bizarre start as Doug Welniak makes the stop for Nebraska and will look now at the Florida State offense from their own 24-yard line. McManus, Williams, Smith, Lewis, Gaynor, and the tight end is Pat Carter. Ayanata, Yeomans, Salva, Kuypers, Tomberlin, the offensive line for Florida State. So Florida State goes to work from the 24-yard line. They fake the reverse. And Sammy Smith to the 34-yard line, close to the first down before Jeff Tomjack makes the tackle. Charlie, Bobby Bowden wants Nebraska to think about what they're going to do. They used to use a lot of these gimmicks. This year, they've got a lot more ability, a lot more talent, so they don't run the reverses as much as they used to. But that has been the book on him. There he fakes the receiver coming around. And Sammy Smith with a great power and speed gets a big first down. Florida start. State begins up on top. Just shy of the first down. So Mark it second down and what? Smith will pick up the first down to the 35-yard line. Jeff Jamrock makes a tackle. Let's look at that defense with Thomas Smith, Pete, Jim Rother, and Jeff Jamrock. Linebackers, Forch and Etienne, and you'll see them in action. Hicks, Fryer, Blazik, and Washington scheduled to start. However, now Jeff Tomjack and Marvin Sanders are in the defense for Nebraska, and a change in that offensive line for Florida State is John Brown, is now starting at the strong side guard. And it is a first down just short of the 35-yard line. Ball 
game just underway here in Tempe, Arizona, the 17th edition of the Sunkiss Fiesta Bowl here at Sun Devil Stadium, which will hold just over 70,000 and a sellout crowd. A formation to pass from, but instead it's the draw to spin. The Seminoles have shown this before. A gain of a yard to the 36. It'll be second down and nine as Neil Smith makes the tackle. Normally with split backs that wide, you expect to pass. But they'll run off of it. Well, they, they do want to they want to let defense to think a lot, don't they? They run out of the pro set all the time, Troy. In fact, doing a game like this and doing a pro game for us as broadcasters, Florida State takes on the look of a professional football team. They run the split back set. What they want to do is draw quite a bit and run the screen to keep the great pass rush of Nebraska away from quarterback Danny McManus. Sammy Smith and Dane Williams are the running backs. Play action. Fake McManus rolls up to the 40. The 45 has the first down and out of bounds at the 43-yard line of Nebraska. 21 yards on the carry. Try let's take a look at it from the other side. McManus had an option here. He could throw the ball to Ronald Lewis downfield or to number 85, the tight end, Pat Carter. A nice fake going to Williams. And here he's got the option. Watch the block coming up of Ronald Lewis, number seven. There it is right there at the bottom of your screen that allows McManus to get an extra five yards. And a first down for Florida State at the Nebraska 43. Danny McManus, the senior, 6'1", 199 pounds. And at the luncheon, this week, he was a spokesman for the team, the luncheon. 5,000 people there for the kickoff luncheon. One of the traditions here at the Sunkiss Fiesta. This is a screen. Good defensive play as Dane Williams is dropped as the 50. Fumble, and it is recovered by Nebraska. Jeff Tomczak. Neil Smith, number 99, was there. Charlie, as I mentioned earlier, we're going to see a lot of draws. We're going to see a lot of screens. They're hoping that people like Broderick Thomas, number 89, will go to the quarterback. But watch, he's got the great speed. He did get inside, but had enough ability to come back and get in on the play. A clear fumble on the part of Dane Williams, number 49. Nebraska has it back. Jeff Tomjack recovers at the 50-yard line. Nebraska's first opportunity on offense. We have no score. Keith Jones. Couple of yards to the 48-yard line. It'll be second down and eight. Marvin Mayhew makes the tackle offensively for the Cornhuskers. Taylor, Heibel, Jones, Bell, Gregory, and Tom Banderas is the tight end. Sledge, Keeler, Young, McCormick, and Leitner, the offensive line for Nebraska. Second down and eight. 12 minutes, 16 seconds, time remaining, first quarter, no score here at the Sunkiss Fiesta Bowl. The gift to the first back through, that's Micah Heibel, the senior from Lincoln, Nebraska, and he has a couple of yards to the 46. So it will be third down and six. Hayes, Higgins, Gabbard, the defensive line with Thompson, McGowan, Palmer, and Warren, the four linebackers for the Seminoles. Sanders, Mayhew, Shiver, and Newell in the secondary. Third down and six is Haggins is assisted off, uh, shaken up just a little bit on the play. El Shahawi. Magni El Shahawi replaces him. Play action fake by Taylor. All the time in the world throws. Incomplete. He was going to Morgan Gregory. And it is incomplete. Martin Mayhew had the coverage. the throwing motion to Steve Taylor. People sometimes think that he's just an option quarterback, but he does have the ability to throw the football. Play action fake, that's the way you'll see Nebraska do it most of the afternoon. Take a look at his feet. He's flat-footed. One of the problems he's had, he's not up on his toes. One of the problems he has as a quarterback, he's not up on his toes delivering the football, Charlie. Because of that, his motion throws a rainbow pass. you watch McManus later on, you'll find him up on his throws, delivering the ball much quicker. John Croker kicking fourth down and six, Deion Sanders, the return man. He stays away from it. It will be down at about the seven-yard line. So Crooker just wanted to pop it up for about 40 yards, and he got 39 on it. We've got a timeout. We have no score. We'll be back in just a moment. The Sunkiss Fiesta Bowl. Growing up with me. 
The 1988 Sunkiss Fiesta Bowl is brought to you by the Sunkiss family of products, where you can be sure of the highest quality every time. You have our word on it. By American Airlines, something special in the air. By Alamo Rent-A-Car, there are over 4 million miles of roads in America, and with Alamo, all the miles are free. And by Dean Witter, we'll help manage your investments based on your individual needs. Here in Tempe, Arizona, the Sunkiss Fiesta Bowl, we have 11 minutes and 14 seconds. Time remaining in the first quarter, we have no score. Florida State on offense from their own seven-yard line. Edgar Bennett is now in at fullback. And Sammy Smith gets the call. They will mark his progress to the 10. And it will go for three, so it'll be second down and seven as Lawrence Pete, the middle guard, makes the stop at that point. In case you just joined us on their first possession, Florida State moved the ball and then lost it on a fumble at the 50-yard line that was recovered by Jeff Tomjack. And for Nebraska, it was three and out. Three tries and then the punt. So on the early returns, the offense looks as if it belongs to the Seminole. McManus goes deep, and it is incomplete. Ronald Lewis, the intended receiver of the sophomore from Jacksonville. Charlie, when I was telling you the difference between McManus and Taylor, take a look at the feet of Danny McManus. He'll be up on his toes when he throws the ball. That gives him a much quicker release. He's able to get much more emphasis on the football. See him up on his toes when he's throwing it. A perfect motion. He did not have the receiver open downfield, but he does have a quick, quick release because he has good feet. Is he on his toes because he's only 6'1 and he can look over the lineman? That's one of his problems. He really doesn't have a great eye for a quarterback. Here's the draw. Sammy Smith stopped at the 10. It will be fourth down and seven. Jeff Jamrog makes the tackle. So Richard Bell and Dana Brinson set to return the punt of Rick Tootin near the midfield stride. Tootin with a 38.9 yard average. Taken at the 45 yard line by Bell to the 40, to the 30. Inside the 20 to the 18 yard line. Richard Bell with a 27 yard punt return. Kevin Grant brings him down and the Huskers have field position with 950 left to go we're in the first quarter we have no scores we take another look Richard Bell they thought they had some problems because Rod Smith number 88 is gone with an injury but he takes the middle return right up the gut and Florida State is caught napping officially the 19 yard line here's Taylor on the option of pitches to Jones he loses it, but out of bounds, he had last possession. As you see, Deion Sanders, the cornerback, the All-America who made the play, as you can, he's really keyed up. He's Charlie, ready. He really is, Charlie. The key to Steve Taylor, they can't let him control the football. They want to make him pitch it every time, and they do there, forced him into the bad pitch. Deion Sanders makes the right move. He goes after the player, hoping someone else would come by and pick up the fumble. A loss of two, second and 12. There's the late pitch to Jones. And he's out of bounds inside the five-yard line. And Steve Taylor waited as long as he possibly could. A gain of 17 yards. Sorry, the last time that these two teams played, Taylor rushed for 140 yards. They promised they wouldn't let him do it again. But he makes the good move, getting outside away from the first defender and gets it into the hands of Keith Jones. There it is. They should have gotten to him immediately, but they allowed him to the perimeter. And once Taylor breaks the perimeter, he's in a position to toss it back to Jones. Three-yard line, first down goal to go, a double tight end on the set. Here's Jones score. Keith 
Steve Jobs, who scored 13 touchdowns during the season, opens the scoring here at the Fiesta Bowl. Blake Monroe, Chris Drennan to attempt the extra point. The snapper is Jeff Anderson, and he splits it. It's Nebraska 7, and Florida State nothing. We'll be back with a kickoff in just a moment. Take a look at Paul McGowan, number 38, the Butkus Award winner, the linebacker right in your screen. Watch him go over the top. No, I'm sorry, it's not him. It's, oh, no. a, it's tough to get that number, but somebody dove over the top. Happened to miss, miss Keith Jones, however. He gets in for the score. This is what set it up. The option play on the part of Taylor. They don't get to him quick enough. That's Stan Shiver, number 37, who misses. That allows Keith Jones to get in close. Charlie, they've got to get to Steve Taylor with either the linebacker, Shelton Thompson, or with Stan Shiver, the strong safety. They can't let him run the perimeter. Drennan kicking off. This one goes deep. And it is Dexter Carter from the one. Dexter to the 20. Set to the attack of the 25, the 30. Breaks another one to the 40, to the 43-yard line. 42 yards on the return. Drennan, the kicker, along with Reggie Cooper, make the tackle. Dexter Carter, 5'9", 159-pound sophomore. Try to take a look at it from the other side. There's nothing to this except for the ability of Dexter Carter. There's no hole there. Watch all the red jerseys. They form the gap. He gets to the outside finally. Then it's all on his own, just twisting and diving. But there was not much of a hole for Carter to get through. That's simply individual effort. And in addition, a face mask brought him down, and they're going to tack that on to the end of the play. Oh, yeah, there it is, coming in from the side. Now, that's Chris Drennan, the kicker. So the ball is at the 48-yard line. And a first down for Florida State on their own 48. 9-18 left to go first quarter. Nebraska leads 7-0. Pat Carter, the tight end, going in motion. He operates like an H-back. Pump fake pass back underneath to Dane Williams is incomplete. It'll be second down and 10. It was Lawrence Pete who was putting the pressure on in the Citrus Bowl. Pimpson 14, Penn State 7 at the half. Speaking of Penn State, of course, last year here, it was Miami against Penn State. Your alma mater, Bob Greasy, joined us. He, of course, lived in Miami, uh, but although he played at Purdue, what I'm leading to is the mail that we got, and the mail that we will get after this one, and I will come back to that story after this play. It's always interesting. The mail that we receive after the college bowls, more fun than anything else that goes on. Dexter Carter. They'll spot the ball at the 48-yard line of Nebraska. It's going to be third down and six, and we'll take another look at it. Jeff Jamrock. Charlie, interestingly enough, they're going to the left side of their offensive line. That's away from their strength, but they're trying to run away from Neil Smith and from Roderick Thomas, a pair of all Big Eight performers. Smith comes from his other side, number 99, with a big hit there, but he had a pursuit from the other side of the line of scrimmage. One of the keys for this afternoon's game is going to find out, does Florida State have enough ability and strength with their offensive line to deal with Neil Smith and Roderick Thomas on the right? Third down and six, we've got a flag. We had some quick jumping. Swing pass left side to Williams. He lose about six, but Nebraska may have jumped as the flag was dropped. Charles Fryer. Bruise, thigh, and all, starting at defensive right cornerback, is a man who made the tackle. Neil Smith may have jumped. That's Wendell Shelton, the referee, the officiating crew from the Southwest Conference. Defense offside at the snap. Five-yard penalty, third down. That is Neil Smith, the All-America from New Orleans. 6'5", a 260-pound senior. So it'll be a third down and one. Jordan, when he came to school at Nebraska, he only weighed about 215 pounds and ran a five-flat 40-yard dash. He's now 260 pounds, and he runs a 4'6". It tells you something about oh. the strength and conditioning program that Nebraska has. Program the best in the country. Best in the country. All the other coaches, God is going to go there to copy it. First back through, Dane Williams going for the first down. Had a couple of yards, and he gets it at the 41-yard line. So Florida State has a first down. They trail as Nebraska leads 
Keith Jones scoring from three yards out, the only score in the ball game. Neil Smith comes back to make the tackle here in the Cotton Bowl in the first quarter. Notre Dame leading Texas A&M by a score of seven to nothing. Back to the letters. Well, we'll get we'll get letters from Nebraska. Half of them will say that we were for Florida State. The other half will say we did a nice ball game. We'll get letters from Florida State, and half of them will say that we were for Nebraska, and the other half will say that we did a pretty good ball game. Pass a little bit low from Danny McManus. Terry Anthony, the intended was it Terry? I know it was Pat Carter. So it'll be second down and ten. Charlie Carter in motion coming across the formation of big, big target, an All-American prospect. Inside, there's really nothing to go to. It's trying to find a spot in the open zone, but Jackson, number four, as you see, had him corralled pretty well. The quick release of Danny McManus was not enough to complete it in between a strong zone by Nebraska. Only one of four, minus seven yards. Anthony, O'Malley, and Dossey all now in as receivers. And here's the draw. Roderick Thomas was waiting for Dexter Carter. Charlie, this is the fourth draw we've seen so far this afternoon by Florida State. They're trying to keep Nebraska away from Danny McManus by doing it. However, they're running it so often that, as you said, it seemed that Broderick Thomas was just waiting there for it to happen. They're looking for the draw and for the screen, but that, in a sense, will do what Florida State wants. It'll keep them from that strong upfield rush that's so successful. Oh, wait a minute, Dexter. When, he, when you turn around and he's 6'3", 235, <laughs> you think things over. That's right. The loss of a yard is third down and 11. And McManus, so this is a screen over the middle, a center screen to Pat Carter, 31-yard line. This is close to the first down. Tim Jackson makes a tackle. A middle screen is the correct call of that particular play. Well, Trey, what they were trying to do was set up a screen actually to Dexter Carter on the right-hand side. They sent a couple of linemen that way, and then, this is a design play, he comes back after he looks to Carter and finds his outlet, which is Pat Carter, who was not supposed to get to the football, was supposed to go to the other side, to the halfback, Dexter Carter. It is fourth down, about a half a yard to go at the 31-yard line. And you're in four-down territory here. Double tight end set. Fake pass complete. Inside the 20-yard line. Edgar Bennett picks up 15 yards. Tim Jackson with the tackle. As the Seminoles open up the complete playbook here in the first quarter. Charlie, Florida State has been successful all year on fourth down situations with a running game. And you can bet Nebraska knows that from looking at the film this time. Edgar Bennett sneaks out after the ball is faked to him. Gets plenty enough for the first down. 18-yard line, first down. 5.50, time remaining first quarter. Nebraska leading 7-0 on a 19-yard drive in three plays that was set up by the punt return. McManus with pressure. Intercepted at the one-yard line by Brian Washington. Washington to the 35, to the 40. No, he's out of bounds. He's out of bounds at the 36-yard line. McManus has only been sacked one time all year. But that's a problem when you're playing Nebraska because they got the strength and the ability to get to the quarterback. It forced him to release the ball to earlier than he wanted to. And as you can see, within the zone, he had no chance to get it to the wide receiver. We'll be back. Watch McManus force this ball. He gets pressure from Neil Smith, and he tries to throw it within the zone. But look at this. There's no room there. He should have thrown the football out of bounds. And now the nice run by Washington. He steps out of bounds somewhere down the line. But if not for Dexter Carter, number 13, he may have gone into the end zone. Nebraska leading 7-0. Florida State has turned it over twice. Bubble recovery and an interception. And here's Keith Jones. Defense brings him out, and he'll pick up four to the 40-yard line. It'll be second down six as we pause briefly for station identification. This is the NBC Television Network. You're watching WXFL TV8, Tampa, St. Petersburg. 
This is Charlie Jones, Jimmy Cephalo, Tempe, Arizona, just over five minutes to go with a 1988 Sunkiss Fiesta Bowl. Nebraska, the first quarter, leading Florida State by a score of 7 0. And Nebraska has the ball at their own 40 yard line, second down. Keith Jones. Jones almost breaks this one as he goes out of bounds in the neighborhood of the 50 yard line. They'll mark it the 50 yard line. And he has the first down. Greg Newell, the free safety, is the man who took him out of bounds. Charlie, take a look and see how far Keith Jones is away from the line of scrimmage. About seven or eight yards. The reason being, he has a lot of opportunity to watch the blocking form in front of him. Ibacks from Nebraska continue to line up seven, eight yards behind the line of scrimmage. It sets up all that trap blocking that, uh, trap blocking that Nebraska likes to do. The option and then a reverse. Steve Taylor from Lincoln High School in San Diego, where he broke all of the records, the high school records, of Marcus Allen. Charlie, once again, Florida State is trying to force Steve Taylor to pitch the football. They do a good job of it here. However, he reverses field. There's nothing you can do when someone has this kind of quick ability and quick feet. They did everything they could do defensively, forcing him to pitch the football, and he refused to do it. at the 44-yard line, and there's no gain, so it remains at the 44. It'll be third down and four yards to go as the leading tackler, the weak inside linebacker, Oliveira Paul McGowan for Florida State makes the stop. I mentioned Marcus Allen. Marcus, of course, played here the year that he won the Heisman Trophy for the University of Southern California. Did not play well. Really had a terrible game against Penn State. Penn State had a great ball game. After it, Marcus stayed on the field and talked to everybody. Television, radio, all the newspapers did all the interviews. One of the true, really nice class acts that I have seen in college football. Here's Taylor. When he cuts up field, he leans to the 42. That's two, but he needed four. So it's going to be fourth down and still a couple to go. And the kicking team will come in as we take another look. Charlie, this is a design play. It's actually a quarterback sweep. You know, they, they fake the ball up into Jones. Nice block on the part of Keith Jones, number six. But that is a design play. It's a sweep by the quarterback. Instead of using Jones, they use the same kind of a blocking formation, get the tailback up in there, and allow the quarterback to carry around the end. Deion Sanders set to return the kick of John Croker. coming and it was almost blocked this one goes into the end zone for the touchback 43 yards of the kick it was Alan Stewart who was putting the pressure on he almost got to the ball we've got a timeout and Nebraska has the lead seven to nothing happy new year everybody do you believe in omens but if you believe in omens my media guide my number my media credential the number is 007. <laughs> you should have told that may me be a killer year. You should have told me to bring mine. Mine is 13. Oh, is it really? <laughs> no, I'm only kidding. I have looked, but I'll check it before long. I hope it's not under 13. Uh, but happy New Year, everybody, and stay with us as we've got a dynamite opening here already here at the 17th Fiesta Bowl. We're going on to the Rose Bowl and then to the Orange Bowl and the battle for number one. All on NBC here today. It's Nebraska 7 and Florida State nothing. The Seminoles of Florida State with the first down at their own 20 yard line. Sammy Smith gets the call and barely gets back to the line of scrimmage. Now let's go back to the the punt of John Croker and it was almost by now right in the middle number 11. That's Alan Stewart, and he's a quarterback, Jimmy. Right, exactly. Alan Stewart, it's high ball number 48, misses him completely, and Stewart had a direct shot at the punt. You can bet Nebraska will go back in to tell high ball number 48 he's got to block the outside man. If not, Florida State has blocked six punts this year. It's one of their strengths. They might get one this afternoon if that's not changed. Alan Stewart is the number four quarterback playing on special teams. Here's the number one for setting a screen. It is complete. The swarming defense of Nebraska led by Neil Smith. Loss of seven. Third down and 18. Here is Neil 
Will Smith, the senior from New Orleans. Seven and a half sacks during the regular season, one interception. Charlie, in talking to some of the pro scouts, they feel Neil Smith is a number one draft choice. And I had a conversation with someone uh, close to the New York Jet organization. Their priority this year will either be an offensive or a, def or a defensive tackle, and they like Neil Smith. He's very high on their priority list. He just may be in a uniform of the New York Jets next year. You can't tell me who the person was in high places that, <laughs> that you talked about. I didn't say high places. I said someone who knew something about the Jet organization. Wait, was it Leon Hess? He's in high places, though. They've dominated with the exception of the opening drive by Florida State. So Rick Tootin will be punting. And Richard Bell and Dana Brinson again can give Nebraska excellent field position. And you will remember that it was Richard Bell on the 27-yard punt return that set up the first score. This is Brinson for the 48. He has an opening to the 35, the 30. He can do it. And he does it. Point attempt by Chris Drennan. It is good. And Nebraska leads 14 to nothing. Chris Drennan will be kicking off with Dexter Carter and Keith Ross, the return men for the Seminoles. Florida State down 14 to nothing. They're the return men. Sunday afternoon. The temperature now creeping up into the 50s. It's been cool this week, but very nice. From the two-yard line is Dexter Carter. Carter pulled out at the 17, maybe the 18. Let's go back to the touchdown. Charlie, two key blocks set it up for Brinson to go all the way into the end zone. The first one comes from Jeff Jamrock, number 80, right part of your screen. There it is there, the second 37. That stuck well in the act, opens up the hole, and Brinson, with a great speed, was not touched all the way into the end zone. That is Brinson's second punt return for a touchdown. The first one was against Utah State, and that was good for 57 yards. This one, 52 yards. And we have an injury timeout on the field as one of the Nebraska players is being worked on. And that's Leroy Etienne, a strong side linebacker from New Iberia, Louisiana. And a key, key part right, of the Huskers defense. He's their leading tackler, yeah. uh, 75 tackles on the year. He's their, the man they want in the middle to show up. He's the strong side linebacker. An injury to ATN would be devastating to Nebraska. He's coming out now, of course, to save a timeout. If he stayed in, they would be charged with a timeout. So we'll check to see if he comes right back in. At the 18-yard line, Florida State, Tom Osborne, the head coach of Nebraska. Very quiet man, but he... He tore him apart at the at the luncheon this week at the kickoff. He was hysterical. We'll tell you what he said. From the 18-yard line, play action fake by McManus. Complete at the 35 to the 40. Herb Gaynor to the 50-yard line. 32 yards. Randall Jobman with the tackle. 
Trey, with all the pressure that Florida State has been getting, this is only a two-man pattern. They've kept the running backs in to take care of Neil Smith and Broderick Thomas. Thompson, I'm sorry, but look, right across the middle, surprisingly, right in the middle of the zone, Herb Gaynor finds an open area, but the important part about that play, there are only two receivers downfield. They're keeping their running backs in to take care of the strong rush of Nebraska. And Leroy Atien back in on defense for Nebraska, and the pass is incomplete to Pat Carter, and Atien has the coverage. It'll be second down and 10 at the 50-yard line. Tom Osborne congratulating at the luncheon Bobby Bowden and the Florida State Seminoles on their record of 10-1. and one. He said it was, of course, an outstanding record, which it is, and he congratulated them. And he said, uh, there's a score, and I'll get to that in just a moment. Well, we'll get the score, and I'll finish the story later. Clemson 14, Penn State 10. That's the score in the third quarter. I know you're dying to hear what Osborne said. McManus with a lot of time to throw underneath the coverage to Gaynor. As the defensive secondary was giving ground, and they'll mark it the 42-yard line. So it's good for eight. It'll be third down and two as Steve Forge, the number two tackler for Nebraska, stops him. No, they're marking the 41-yard line, so it'll be third down and one. ATN, the defensive captain for Nebraska, as he looks to the sideline and gets the defensive signals that are being flashed in. And we're taking the countdown to the end of the first quarter. Close to the first down, to the 40-yard line, as Edgar Bennett, the freshman from Jacksonville, gets the call. ATN makes the tackle as time runs out. First quarter is in the books. Nebraska 14 and Florida State another. Welcome back to the 17th Sunkiss Fiesta Bowl. Sun Devil Stadium in Tempe, Arizona. We start the second quarter. Nebraska out in front of Florida State by a score of 14 to nothing. Keith Jones, the first touchdown from three yards out, a 19-yard drive in three plays, set up by Richard Bell's punt return of 27 yards. The second touchdown, a 52-yard punt return by Dana Bretson. That's been the scoring. It's 14 to nothing. And Florida State now has a first down at the Nebraska 40-yard line. McManus completing six of 12. One big one. The total is 51 yards. He's had an interception. Good play action fake, but he misses Ronald Lloyd. And it will be second down and 10. Later in today's game, we'll be selecting the outstanding player from each team. Budweiser will donate a total of $2,000 to the school's general scholarship fund. Bobby Bowden, the head coach of Florida State. First half statistics. Uh, look at the passing yards for Nebraska. Really not a, a great shocker. They're, they're going to run the football, as we said earlier on, in our open. But time of possession, Florida that State has had about 10 minutes, yet they have no points up on the board. Dominated by the Nebraska defense that have they've given a little ground where they have stopped and they have two turnovers, two takeaways to their credit. This pass incomplete. He had pressure. Lewis was coming back. In reality, he was throwing it away. Special teams of, of Nebraska in the scoring, setting up all of the action really in the first quarter score as far as scoring is concerned. Try, I think there was a mistake there. It seemed like uh, McManus There's wanted to set up a screen. Florida State earlier on in the week, we talked to Bobby Bowden. He said, we're going to screen, we're going to draw, try to keep Nebraska off balance away from our quarterback. But I think they're doing it too much. They're getting away from the offense that's brought them here. They have run four screens so far and four draws. They're down and 10. Sammy Smith, the fake and the super fake to Sammy Smith. Then the completed pass of 18 yards to Ronald Lewis. And it was the fake that set it up, and Lorenzo Hicks makes a tackle. And Lewis taking a deep breath as he sits on the ground, and we'll have an injury timeout. You're right, Charlie. The fake really oh, did yeah. hold the linebackers inside. ATN is uh, frozen. Also, O'Malley, number 92, in the middle of the screen, took two of the defenders there, and that allowed the hole to open up behind for number seven, Ronald Lewis. And if you notice, the fake was so good that Lawrence Pete was in him, you know, went over on the play, almost as if to make the tackle. And my eyes went right with him. I thought he gave it to him. I tell you, it was a good play. So converting on a third down opportunity was third and 10 at the 40. Lewis being helped to the sideline has been replaced now by Lawrence Dossie. And here is Lewis, the sophomore from Jacksonville, Florida. 
That was his first reception. Officially good for 18 yards to the 22 yard line and a first down. He was going to Herb Gaynor. Ron Lewis being worked on on the sidelines. Back up, I probably Charlie wants to test it out before going back into the contest. That's exactly what he's doing. Fourteen twenty-two. Time remaining. First half. Nebraska fourteen. Florida State nothing. Florida State threatening for the second time in the ball game. They were intercepted at the one-yard line in the first quarter. Play action fake. Into double coverage. Is it there? Incomplete. Gator couldn't pull it in. It was laid in perfectly by Danny McManus. Good pass. Charlie, it's a perfect pack, pass. McManus had to throw it over the zone into the corner, but that corner of the end zone right now at this time of day is the most difficult for the receivers. They are looking right back into the sun, and it's a rainbow pass that had to be over the defensive back in front. It looked like he lost it in the yeah, sun for just right. a second. Charles Fryer and Brian Washington had the coverage, and you could see right there from that freeze the, where the shadows are, and the shadows reaching right in, and, that's, and then he looks back from that corner. And as a receiver, that's one of the first things you want to check out. Where's the sun where you're going to be on the field? When you first come to the stadium, that's what you do as a receiver. Where's the sun? Jamie Smith. 26-yard line. He ends up losing four as Steve Forge finally brings him down at the 26-yard line along with Tim Jackson. It'll be fourth down. A couple of scores. And the Florida Citrus Bowl, Clemson 21 and Penn State 10 in the third quarter. Notre Dame leading Texas A&M in the Cotton Bowl in Dallas in the first quarter by a score of 7 to nothing, And a 43-yard field goal attempt by Derek Schmidt. He has hit from 53 this year. His career long is 54. McManus is holding. It is high. Will it carry? No. It carries, but he's still missing. Or did it not carry? You had your eye on it. I, it looked to me like it hit the goalpost. Charlie, we'll check it. This 1988 Sunkiss Fiesta Bowl is being brought to you by Bud Light, proud sponsor of the 1988 U.S. Olympic team. Everything else is just a light. By Shearson Lehman Brothers and E.F. Hutton joining together to serve this serious investor. By Magnavox. Smart products for smart people. Magnavox, smart, very smart. And by Pontiac, America's road car company. Pontiac, we build excitement. Charlie, in checking uh, that tape, uh, Schmidt missed by about uh, two feet to the right. It did to not the right hit side. the upright, but he did clearly miss by a couple of feet. From the 26-yard line, Ryan Carpenter takes the handoff. Paul McGowan makes the tackle at the 28. So a gain of a couple, and it'll be second down and eight. Now we go back to the field goal attempt by Derek Schmidt. It's tough to, to see, but to right to the right of the goalpost, take a look at it. It does not hit the upright. It misses by a couple of feet. The official standing right underneath has the perfect angle for it. And of course, that's a good angle as well. This is right. Second down and eight. The score is still Nebraska 14 and Florida State nothing. Quick screen outside to Dana Bretzel. Good defensive reaction by Alfonso Williams. It'll be a loss of a yard to the 27 and it's third down and nine. Florida State. Rushing 13 times, passing 17. Nebraska, as you can see, a more conservative office. Throwing only one pass this far. Third down and nine. You look for the throw here. There's pressure. Here it is. Could be intercepted, and it is at the 40-yard line by Deion Sanders. Oh, 
talk quite a bit about the pressure of the Nebraska team. Florida State does a fairly good job of it as well. They force Steve Taylor, even after the play action fake, to get rid of the football. He's running around back there, but four or five defenders from Florida State force him to get rid of it. He actually should have eaten the football or thrown it away. He's throwing into the area. Deion Sanders, maybe the best defensive back in college football today, didn't have to work very hard on that, playing his own, able to step in front and make the interception. <laughs> and he, he brings his friend along for the picture session. First down, Florida State at the Nebraska 41-yard line. McManus comes out throwing, has time deep over the middle. Almost intercepted back. Charles Fryer has a bruised thigh. Two days ago, did not think he would play at all. Much less start. Almost had the interception. Lawrence Dossey, the intended receiver. Second down and two. Right, let's take a look at the motion of Danny McManus off the play action fake. Is he on top of his toes? He sure is. He has the good form, but he throws into the middle of his own. He really should not have, but again, he does have that good that good form. Now watch it. He gets it over the linebacker, but the receiver is clearly not open. In fact, three defenders lined up. McManus simply should have thrown that one away. Second and ten. Sammy Smith. The 30, 24 yard line. 17 yards on the play. Ryan Washington with the tackle and the first down. Sammy Smith is a long strider, Charlie. Watch, they're going back to the left side of the field. Again, that's away from their strength, but they want to keep it away from the strength of the Nebraska defense. And Smith, the long strides, picks much more up, uh, more than a first down than what he needed. It's interesting, though, Charlie. The right side of Florida State's offensive line behind Salva, Kuypers, and Tomlin is their strength. And they are running away from that because they're concerned about Neil Smith and Broderick Thomas. First down at the 24. to throw, sails it high, and it is incomplete. Lawrence Dossey, the attended receiver, had cut off the pattern and was coming across. There was some miscommunication. Well, that was the same play that he tried before when I mentioned he should have thrown it away. Yep. He did throw it away. It was okay. a smart he play. He to throw it away. But he came back. He saw that he did not have the defense that he wanted. This is the same exact play except to the other side. Now, he's pretty disgusted, <laughs> but it was a good choice. He threw it far and away. Don't be upset about that, McManus. Danny, you did the right thing. Steve Forch was putting the pressure on him. Second and 10. McManus only 7 of 19, 69 yards, and an interception. Sets up deep as if to set a screen. Pulled down by Gaynor. Good reception all the way to the 10-yard line. 14 yards to the senior from Sarasota, Herb Gaynor. Leroy Etienne making the tackle. Charlie, when you look at Herb Gaynor, he reminds you of a lot of the receivers from Florida State. How about Hassan Jones now with the Minnesota Vikings? Looks a lot like him coming across the middle. You mentioned senior. That's the key word. He knows where the first bound marker is, and he picks it up by about two or three yards with a good running after the catch. They might get the 11-yard line. In reality, it's between the 11 and the 10 as you take another look. So it is first to 10 just outside of the 10. Edgar Bennett gets a call, and Steve Forge stays at home to bring him down. It'll be second down and nine. Pick up a yard on the play. Nebraska leading 14 to nothing. There's Tom Osborne, the head coach of the Huskers. Time to finish that story up? No, we'll save it. We'll save it. Great story. <laughs> I, the story's not it. that good. That's the problem. We should have told it a long time ago and gotten rid of it. Second down and nine at the 10-yard line. Just over 10 and a half to go first half. Touchdown, Florida State. It's inside of everybody. There are three defenders for Nebraska in the middle of the end zone. Now look at this. He goes inside of number five, Brian Washington. But Washington had help from Jackson and a lot of other players. Again, the savvy of Herb Gaynor completed that pass. 41 yards in six plays. It was set up by the interception. The extra point is up by Derek Smith. It is good. And Florida State pulls with a seven. Nebraska 14. Florida State seven will be back with a kickoff.
This is Charlie Jones, Jimmy Cephalo. Happy New Year, everybody. We've got a great one working here. Nebraska 14, Florida State 7, with 10 and a half minutes left to go in the first half. Then it's on to Dick Enberg and Merlin Olsen in the Rose Bowl, then on to the battle for number one in the Orange Bowl. Don Cricky will be there, of course, with Bob Trumpy and Tom Hammond. Yes, Jim. Charlie, the, go ahead. the success of Florida State on that drive. They did not run a draw once nor a screen one time. They're going away from it. We're back to the offense that brought them to 10 and 1. Dana Brinson will down it in the end zone, so they'll bring it out to the 20-yard line. Richie Andrews kicks off for Florida State. The freshman for Fort Lauderdale, and let's go back to the touchdown. Look at the touchdown, Charlie. Watch the three defensive backs in the end zone. They're playing a zone defense. They should not back all the way into the end zone. They have the end line of the end zone to help them out. And so somebody should have stayed right on the goal line. When a, when a receiver is in there, you're hoping that somebody will backpedal all the way to the back of the end zone. You just step in front of them, make the catch. That's exactly what Herb Gaynor did. The touchdown coming on that 41-yard drive set up by Deion Sanders' interception. Nebraska now from the 20. Steve Taylor spinning to the 25. Paul McGowan with the tackle along with Dedrick Dodge. Second down and five. And we have an injury timeout. Total plays thus far, 36 to 50. This is David Palmer, the senior from Tallahassee, as he left down. And it'll be second down and five. Henley Hawkins, the receiver wide to the near side. Tyrese Knox, now the eye back, picks up the first down. As he goes across the 31, maybe the 32, and as Dedrick dies to free safety again, who makes the stop. Mark it at the 32. Gain of seven, first down. seconds left to go second quarter Nebraska leading by seven 14 to seven Watch the blocking by the Nebraska front line coming to this side. You see number 61, John McCormick getting a nice block on the end. And Brian Carpenter, number 29, the fullback gets a good block, too. That's what Nebraska tries to do, Charlie. They set you up with the option, then they come back with the power sweep. And it's tough to play both. When you play an option, it's a finesse defense. When you play the power sweep, you better dig in and knock somebody down. First down at the 42-yard line. Taylor cuts back to the 35. Seven yards. Steve Gabbard makes the tackle. In the Cotton Bowl in the second quarter, it is now Notre Dame seven and Texas A&M three. Here is Nebraska 14, Florida State seven, and Nebraska moving on off it, starting this drive at their own 20. Now at the 35-yard line of Florida State. Eight minutes and 49 seconds left to go in the period. Second down and three. Tyrese Knox again with the call. Keith Carter makes the tackle. First down, Husker. Brinson coming in. Henley Hawkins, a wide receiver, coming into the set. Fake of the reverse. 26-yard line. Gain of three. Second down and seven. As Taylor keeps it. Charlie, there's center 
Jake Young, I believe number 68 is in there now. He uh, real quick off the ball. Take a look at him. Watch how quick he gets down and after the nose tackle. That's number 53, Odell Haggins. See how he shades to one side? He got him to the left side because that's exactly where the play was going. He wanted to shade him to one side to be able to allow the running back to get to the corner. And then John McCormick, the All-American guard, comes over, covers on the block to make sure that he has him. Well, they had to set something up because they had to fake the Brinson coming back to that side. So they're trying to fake the linebackers out with that line blocking. Ball is loose. Florida State has it. This play is made possible by Terry Warren, number 80. Watch him. He runs over the fullback, Micah Heibel, number 48, and that changes the pitch for him. Taylor is expecting the pitch, and the pitch man, Terrence Knox, is not there. It was Eric Williams that hit him and jarred it loose, and Paul McGowan recovered the fumble, and Florida State has the ball at their own 25-yard line, and the turnovers are even two on each side. Here's a fake. McManus to the 30. To the 40, out to the 43-yard line. Ron Lewis with the lead block. 19 yards on the play. Jeff Jamrog with the tackle. This is the second time they've run this, Charlie. This is almost like a naked bootleg. He's out in front with the option to throw or pass. But Ron Lewis makes the intelligent decision of blocking downfield after he's sure that McManus is going to run with the football. Nice block by number seven in front of the play. They spotted at the 44. And a first down. Edgar Bennett. The ball carrier. And he has a couple of yards, maybe three. We'll give him two to the 46. It'll be second down at eight. Tom Jack, who has a fumble recovery of the ball game. Makes the tackle. Officially, they're going to mark it the 47th yard line. 47 yard line, so it is. Palmer. Second down and seven. a step away from Danny McManus. You remember down on the goal line before the interception by Washington? It was because of the pressure of uh, number 99, Neil Smith. The pressure comes again. This time, McManus with a tremendous play, getting it over ATN and into the hands of the receiver. There it is, Smith, number 99 with the pressure. McManus had to loft it over the top and get it past ATN into the waiting hands of Dexter Carter. Nice play by McManus. First down at the Nebraska 36-yard line. Just under six minutes to go in the first half. Pass is complete on the far side to Edgar Bennett. Bennett near the 20, a gain of 14. Back-to-back -back first down. Leroy ATN makes the tackle. In the Florida Citrus Bowl is Clemson 21 and Penn State 10 in the fourth quarter. And in the Cotton Bowl, Notre Dame 10, Texas A&M 3 in the second period. Here is Nebraska 14, Florida State 7, with 523 left to go in the second quarter. And Florida State on the move. Pat Carter in motion. McManus drops it off. It's Dexter Carter. Carter, a great move. and he's hit by Steve Ford.
Here's a play, Charlie. They finally do come back to the screen. Set it up very well. Look at all the red jerseys inside. They fake the entire defensive front of Nebraska inside, allowing Carter to get the ball and sneak down the sideline. Now, here comes the flag. There's the Spearing. landing. Oh, yeah. Spearing. Yeah, he was late, and he came in with the helmet as well. Let's see how they faked him in. Sneaks inside of the tackle. That's very important. He runs into Jamrock. Gets rid of him. Dead ball. Personal foul. Defense. Their first down. To be first and goal at the four. Meanwhile, back at the 30-yard line, Roderick Thomas is injured and is being worked on there. So we have an injury timeout. By the way, Troy, that late hit seemed to be Steve Forch, number 38, coming in right at the end. So we'll take a full timeout. Nebraska 14, Florida State 7. This is the Sunkiss. We're moving on the five-minute mark. Time remaining in the first half. Three tight ends are in for Florida State. They like to run what they call the 34 wham here, the fullback in short yard. And they're set up for it. Number 92 O'Malley, the halfback, is the key. And they go to it. And it there works. is Dane Williams, his 16th touchdown of the year. So Florida State pulls within one, and Derek Schmidt will go for the top. Marty Riggs to snap, Danny McManus to hold. It's tied. Florida State 14, Nebraska 14. We'll be back with the kickoff. This is Charlie Jones, Jimmy Cephalo, the 17th Sun Kiss Fiesta Bowl. In a sun-drenched afternoon, Tippy, Arizona. And Richie Andrews, the freshman, will be kicking off to either Richard Bell or Dana Brinson. But the way that Andrews kicks off, we read really no win today. He can sail it to the end zone. This one makes it on the hop, and we'll have the touchback. We'll bring it out to the 20-yard line. Let's go back to 34 Wham, the plug. 34 Wham, number 92 O'Malley. He's actually a tight end playing halfback. He's the Wham man. He opens the area up. Actually, he missed the block on that play. Now, let's take another look at it. The keys are Tomlin, 72, Carter, 85. That's the tackle in the tight end. Look at the big hole that opens up. O'Malley dove over the top and missed, but Dane Williams had enough strength to get into the end zone. They've run it now 26 times this year. It's worked 25 times. The play is so good you can miss a block and still score. Nebraska from the 20-yard line. We're tied. 14-14. Steve Taylor is cut down at the line of scrimmage. Odell Haggins makes the play. Haggins is, uh, <laughs> Haggins is really him. fired up. Charlie, he's the smartest nose tackle I've ever heard of. Tell me why. Because he doesn't want to play the position. <laughs> they said to him in last spring, we want you to play nose. He says, no, I want to play linebacker. They had some injuries and some problems early on. They moved him there. He's got eight sacks that leads the team, but he's smart because he doesn't want to play it. Toughest position in football. Second and ten. Keith Jones. Four yards to the 24. Third down six. Haggins makes the tackle. See how smart Haggins is. Part of the deal was he said, I will move to nose guard, providing I can move back next year to linebacker. As long as I get the option. And he said he's going to use it, even though he's played so very well. You see, there's three offensive blockers trying to get at him, and yet he fights off the pressure and gets to the running back, Keith Jones. Third down, just over five to go. For the first down, call it six. For the stiff arm and the cut back. Oh. Paul McGowan and Eric Hayes were there to greet him. You can hear that up here. Now, this 
this is why Haggins does not like to play the guard. <laughs> sometimes, you know, you get the bear, sometimes the bear knocks you on the ground, and that's exactly what happened to him. Nose tackle is tough, because as you see, he got hit by the center first, then the guard came down and clipped him from the backside. It's legal in that area, but that is a tough position to play. So John Crooker with a 39.7 yard average will be kicking to Deion Sanders. Here comes pressure, he gets it off. Sanders at the 43. Returns to the 46-yard line. He had to do that without any blocking because they, everybody else was going. A 28-yard kick and a four-yard return. And Keith Newbert makes the play. Well, one of the hazards of returning kicks for Florida State, Charlie, yes, they did block six kicks this year, but as you mentioned, they put 10 men on the line of scrimmage and they try to go after the punt. Well, if they get it off, then Deion Sanders standing back there has no blockers in front of him. You were a punt return man in college. What, what is that like with you all of a sudden? You know that you're not going to have any blockers. Well, I was the smartest punt return <laughs> man I do because I didn't want to do it. I told I didn't want to do it any longer. And Don Chill, after my rookie year, was nice enough to say, you know, he didn't do it very well. You're right. <laughs> But you, Ox, actually, when you played here in the Fiesta Bowl, you had a great punt return. It grows longer every year, of course. The pass is complete. Edgar Bennett. Bennett taken out of bounds at the 38-yard line. Nebraska Territory, 17 yards. Charles Fryer, Charles Fryer and Mark Blazek make the stop. A nice play. Watch the fake. I think they do fake it to Bennett, number 22 first. He slips out into the flat. And there's not a Nebraska Cornhusker anywhere near him. They went for the run fake. Nice maneuvering by Danny McManus to sell the run first. You saw the graphic just a moment ago. Be sure to stay with us at halftime. Gail Gardner, who we have welcomed to the NBC Sports family today. And she will be interviewing Earl Bruce at halftime. Earl Bruce in Pompano Beach, Florida. They've already done the interview. They'll be showing that. And join Gail, and she'll be updating all of the other bowl games today. As we start 1988, Herb Gaynor, the intended receiver, and Hicks had the coverage. It'll be second down. It's the toughest catch for a receiver going inside. Herb Gaynor, he's got the defensive back all over him from the other side. Lorenzo Hicks with a nice coverage. Just over two and a half minutes left to go in the first half in a tie ball game, 14-14. And then, of course, it's on to the granddaddy, the Rose Bowl, and then to the national championship of the Orange Bowl. McManus dropped back at the 45. He'll lose seven yards on the play, and Broderick Thomas gets the side. Charlie, this is just the second time all season long that Danny McManus has been sacked. Watch the pressure coming from the front side. Tomberlin, number 72, with a nice block. However, Roderick Thomas over the back side gets to McManus just two times all season long with the sack. That was a big concern of Florida State. Erase that. That's the fifth time. Two last year, four this year. Yes, I wrote it down. Wrong. We'll go to that. Check it. Uh, I will. <laughs> Maybe I wrote it down. I don't think so, though. You're right, he's been sacked four times that's tonight. Right. They said once the year that's before. Right. And if we correct it now, it's a bit erased, so it's You're all right. right. This so is the okay. fifth time all yes, season. Right. Well, that's what you meant to say. What you really meant to say is he don't really get, he doesn't get sacked a lot. Not very often. <laughs> Not very often. You know, he's got such quick feet and that quick release, and he'd rather throw it away than to simply go down on his back. Well, now that we've buried that hole and been digging our way out of it, we have a timeout on the field. And a time a moment for us to speak about the wild card, the AFC wild card, the Seattle Seahawks at Houston, Sunday at 3.30 p.m. Eastern time. And that, of course, is the first step leading to the championship game and then on to the Super Bowl in San Diego. Tough ticket. <laughs> Best seat in the house. <laughs> it is. That's right. That's <laughs> up behind the press box here. That's a great, that's a great spot, a great setting. You know, he always, there should be no cheering. Now, notice that, notice uh, right there, that no cheering in the press box. Well, if you hear some cheering in our press box, we're, uh, let's go, Gale. Way to go. I'll tell you about our location later. It's kind of interesting. And the Tom Osborne story. I'll finish it. Third down and 17. Did he catch it? Yes, he did. Play 18 yards, and he has 
the first down. That was third and 17. According to our figures, let's see if it's good enough on the field. Yes, it is. Seven-yard line of Nebraska with a minute 48 and counting. That is the time remaining in the first half. 22. He overthrows Dexter Carter, and it'll be second down and ten. Is everybody covered in reality? He was just throwing it away. Well, he sent three receivers, one right down the middle of the field, and there's two wideouts along the sidelines, and he tried to get it in between to the tight end. But they had a deep zone in front of him, and actually, he would have been smarter to throw it as far as he could out of the end zone. He threw it in a safe place, though. Nobody came up with it. Second and ten. Tom O'Malley, the motion man. Here's the blitz. Is complete 25-yard line. Edgar Bennett brought down by Leroy ATM. So it's only two, and it'll be third down and eight. Within the field goal range of Derek Schmidt, who has hit this year from 53 yards out and has a career 54-yarder. He missed high and right from 43 yards out earlier here. In the second quarter, in the same direction. McManus on target touchdown. second touchdown reception of the game. All right, here's a look at the secondary. Watch number 23, the safety in the middle of the field at Mark Blazek. He slips down, and that's what allowed uh, Herb Gaynor to sneak in front of him. One of the problems that the secondary of Nebraska has had today is when they're getting close to the end zone, they're backing too far close to it. Again, you've got to keep the receivers in front of you. To go into the end zone does not help once a bit. Now watch Blazek come back. He's too far near the end zone. He should be up the field to take away that slant pattern against that zone. A quarterback should not be able to complete a post. 21 unanswered points by Florida State as Richie Andrews kicks out. Brinson from the one-yard line. He's to the 10. To the 20. To the 27-yard line. 26 yards on the return. And Nebraska has 38 seconds. In the first half, Leroy Butler makes the tackle. And in the Florida Citrus Bowl, fourth quarter, Clemson 28, Penn State 10. In the Cotton Bowl, now tied in Dallas at 10-10 in the second quarter. The tie here just broken. It's Florida State 21, Nebraska 14. Nebraska from their own 27-yard line. Taylor to the outside. If he gets a yard, that'll be off. Seminole defense. Florida State with two timeouts left. Nebraska three. 15 seconds and counting left in the first half. You're watching WXFL TV 8, Tampa, St. Petersburg. Time. 
in the 17th Sunkissed Fiesta Bowl with the score, Florida State 21 and Nebraska 14. Sunkiss Fiesta Bowl. I'm Charlie Jones along with Jimmy Cephalo. The score is 21 to nothing. Nebraska with 14 points in the first quarter. And four, 20, uh, 21 let's, let's give them 14 uh, 21 points. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I got ahead of myself. I, got ahead of, I was so anxious to get to the tape. But your, your point is correct. The, uh, yeah. Take, University, do it for me. Florida State University has scored 21 straight points here to come back from the 14 to nothing deficit. They've done it in a lot of ways. This 34 wham play that Bobby Bowden has come up with. This, <laughs> <laughs> this 34 wham play that Bobby Bowden has come up with is tremendous. Watch it. It's worked 25 out of 26 times. Number 92, O'Malley's job is to go inside and get a block. He misses, but Dane Williams, number 49, has got enough strength to come in and still score the touchdown. 25 out of 26 times now in short yardage situations and on the goal line, that play has worked. And everybody knows that it is coming, and even when they, they miss a block on it, it still works. Why, how does that happen? Well, Bobby Bowden said, we're gonna run it until somebody stops the play. How they do it is they have those two strong blockers up front, Carter and Tomberlin, a lot of strength, a big side of the line, and then they bring the other uh, tight end in O'Malley and his job is to go up and find and clean out an area. Well he missed there but a lot of it has to do with Dane Williams. He's a tremendous short yardage runner. He has 15 touchdowns now 16 on the year. Less than 300 yards rushing. It tells you what kind of runner he is. And for Florida State now look at their third touchdown in the second quarter and this is the second touchdown reception for Herb Gaynor, this one for 25 yards. Uh, Herb Gaynor is an intelligent receiver. Watch him sneak, in, sneak inside of Blazek, number 23. He's going to slip down, but Blazek's job is to get up there. He's playing center field, and to make this play, he slips. Gaynor has enough ability to get inside and sneak in for a second touchdown of the afternoon. Charlie, the momentum has switched, obviously, yeah. very drastically here today. I, th I think Bobby Bowden is doing a... A lot of things right. He began with that screen, the draw we talked about. Maybe he went to it a little bit too much, but he kept the pressure away from Danny McManus. Nebraska's game plan is to get to a quarterback. They have to start coming out of that five-man front line and start blitzing Danny McManus. They can't let him sit back there and throw the football. He's been meanwhile, too successful with it. Meanwhile, the first quarter was dominated by Nebraska. It was dominated by their defense and by their return teams. But the Nebraska offense has not been a major factor thus far in the ballgame because a punt return of 27 yards set up Keith Jones's three yard touchdown that was the first for the Cornhuskers and then Dana Brinson with a 52 yard punt return but Nebraska will have the opening opportunity as Richard Bell and Brinson are the deep backs on the return Brinson takes it at the goal line he's to the 10 to the 20 is spun down around the 23-yard line as we'll take a look at the statistics of the first half. Time of possession to Florida State side. It's been that way throughout the game, Jim. Yeah, more so in the first quarter. Remember, Charlie, yep. they had 10 minutes to, uh, 10 and a half minutes to Nebraska's uh, three and a half, and, or four and a half, rather. And that's, that's the surprising uh, portion of it. They've put 21 points on the board, yet they have not had the football as much. Yards passing on the part of Nebraska. Taylor has yet to complete a pass today. They come with their strength, and that's the eye back, Keith Jones. And Stan Shiver is there to meet him. The play selection for Florida State. They've run the ball 18 times. They have thrown it 30. Nebraska 25 times on the ground, and only two passes have been aired up. Second and six at the 27. Keith Jones. To the 32. Needs to go to the 33 for the first down. Gary Kays and Thomas Hart both there for the Seminoles. And we'll have an official's timeout for a measurement. Charlie, with the type of offense that Nebraska runs, they are not the type of a team that can come back. As you saw two passes in the first half of the game, they've got to establish a running attack here and get back down the field and score if they allow Florida State to get the football as they do pick up the first down and get any farther ahead. The offensive strategies of Tom Osborne in Nebraska does not lend itself to coming from behind to win a football game. 
By the way, to finish that story on Tom Osborne, he said, congratulations to Florida State. This was the luncheon on a great season of 10 and 1. He said, I've been trying to convince the whole state of Nebraska that 10 and 1 is a great record. <laughs> fake watch Keith Jones number six he carries the fake out completely it confused everybody the safety in the middle of the field number 40 Greg Newell was confused and Benderis rambles down the field for a big play on the part of Nebraska Charlie fumbles right at the end to luck the ball drops right back into his arms throwing out of the wishbone officially the 19 yard line here's the delay tackle 18 yards try to look at it from the other side this is actually a statue of liberty play watch Brinson just stand there he sticks it back the other side and they form the blocking pattern up but that's the old statue of liberty a couple of nice blocks downfield McCormick number 61 with a great one and Brinson just down to the one that particular set with the play with the, the running back waiting was created by Paul Brown Micah Heibel let's go to Gail Gardner The Florida Citrus Bowl is a final now with Clemson defeating Penn State by the score of 35 to 10. The big man today, Tracy Johnson, the junior fullback, three touchdown runs, three short ones. That one for six yards gave the Tigers the lead for good. They went on to defeat Penn State 35 to 10. Let's go back to Charlie and Jimmy and Tempe. Thank you, Gail. Nebraska now going for the tie. Just back to the line of scrimmage for Keith Jones. Greg Newell with the tackle. And it'll be third down and two at the two. Richard Bell checks into the offensive set. The eye back is Keith Jones. No signal. Nebraska says they have it, and the officials agree. Touchdown for the Huskers. So Nebraska opens with a 77-yard touchdown drive cap for the quarterback, Steve Taylor. See if he gets in, Charlie. Good surge by the offensive line. Tough to tell from that angle. And apparently tough to tell from the official's angle as well. They waited a good uh, 20 seconds before they gave the signal for the touchdown by the quarterback, Steve Taylor. Chris Drennan out of the hold of Cleet Blakeman. For the tie, seven plays on the drive, and we are tied again. This time, the number is 21. 21-21, with 11.41 left to go. We're in the third quarter at the Sunkiss Fiesta Bowl. This 1988 Sunkiss Fiesta Bowl is being brought to you by the Sunkiss family of products, where you can be sure of the highest quality every time. You have our word on it. By Nissan Cars and Trucks, built for the most important race of all, the human race. By Budweiser, proud sponsor of the 1988 U.S. Olympic team. This Bud's for you. And by UPS, for overnight delivery from coast to coast, UPS runs the tightest ship in the shipping business. The 17th Sunkiss Fiesta Bowl. A 21-21 tie, as Chris Drennan will be kicking off for Nebraska with Dexter Carter and Keith Ross, the deep backs on the return. Keith Ross. At the 25, he reverses, needs a block. He's to the 30, the 35. 
spins away, 40, 42 yard line. Steve Stannard of Lincoln, Nebraska is the man who makes the tackle after that 31 yard return. All right, let's take a look at the touchdown. Did Taylor get in or not? There's an interesting part right at the end of this play. Watch where he gets down on the ground. We'll slow it up for you. He's down. Now watch what he does with the arm. He sneaks it into the end zone. There it is. He actually had not broken the plane when he hit the ground. Florida State from their own 43-yard line. Ball carrier, number 22, Edgar Bennett. Edgar Bennett, the ball carrier. Tim Rather makes the tackle. Our number 99, Neil The last three possessions at the end of the first half. Second down and nine. McManus over the middle, on target. At the 42-yard line of Nebraska, Tim Jackson makes the tackle, a gain of 15 yards and the first down. McManus continually is fitting the ball in between the zone. Watch the zone set up. There it is, in between two defenders. Nice throw on the part of McManus. Carter right in between for the first down. Pat Carter, the 6'4", 255-pound senior All-America tight end. Florida State's number two receiver this past season. And the first down at the Nebraska 42. Sammy Smith. A couple of yards to the 40. It'll be second down and eight. As Steve Forch makes the stop. Title number 38, Steve Forch. Tom Osborne on the sideline. Docking with his quarterback, number nine, Steve Taylor. The junior now makes his home in Fresno, California. Time remaining, third quarter, 9.54. Second down and eight. Play action, fake of the bootleg. Throw. Pass is complete to Carter. Carter just bowls his way into the 22-yard line. 18 yards as Neil Smith makes the tackle. This is the third time that McManus has run this play. The first time he's thrown it, let's take a look at it from the other side. It's again the naked bootleg. There's nobody in front of him as far as blockers are concerned, but he does have Carter as an out receiver going downfield. His first choice was to go to Ronald Lewis, number seven, but Carter was the one open, and that's a bull of a man, Charlie. He may play offensive tackle in the pro ranks. He's going to play in the senior bowl half the game as a tight end, half as a blocker. He does both very well. Mark it for 17 to the 23. Marion Butts, the first back through, brought down by Leroy Etienne. 21 yard line, gain of a couple. Second down at eight. Nebraska got off to a 14-0 lead after the end of the first quarter. Florida State with 21 unanswered points, leading at halftime 21-14. And Nebraska coming back to open the second half with a 77-yard drive in seven plus. And we're tied at 21-21. Here's McMahon. Pass is completed the 15-yard line. Sammy Smith with the reception, Forch with the tackle. Smith, during the regular season, only had six receptions on the year. Take a look at that, Charlie. He's got the zone coverage downfield, but has enough sense just to find the open area in the zone. That's what McManus has done so well this afternoon, find the open receiver in between the Nebraska zone. They're going to have to come out of that zone, Charlie, and get to McManus by rushing a linebacker. If they do, they have to play man-to-man. -man. They don't like to do that. Smith's first reception of the ballgame. He takes the fake. McManus. McManus trying just to lay it in with a light touch to Edgar Bennett and his incomplete. 
incomplete. It'll be fourth down and two. And Derek Schmidt will come out with a field goal attempt. He's 0 for 1 in this ball game, missing the same direction in the first half from 43 yards away. High to the right. This is Ron Lewis on that last play. I think he believes he was open. As all good receivers do, they believe they're open, and I think he was on that play. 32-yard field goal attempt. That's Kirby Husker cheering here at the Sunkiss Fiesta Bowl, where we have 7.49, time remaining in the third quarter, and Florida State leads for the second time in the ballgame. This time it's 24-21. Richie Andrews will be kicking off for the Seminoles and for the Cornhuskers, Richard Bell, number 21, and Dana Brinson, number 33, are the return men. This is Brinson from the 2 to the 10. Slips as he makes his cut at the 19, comes down at the 20 or the 21-yard line. Nebraska, on their last drive, went 77 yards in seven plays with the quarterback, Steve Taylor going in from a couple of yards out. First down at the Nebraska 21. Micah Heibel the fullback, Keith Jones the eyeback, and it is Jones. To the 25. misses that's what a good back does nobody blocked Palmer but he was unable to come up with the tailback Keith Jones is standing about eight yards behind the line of scrimmage. They get the ball to him as deeply as possible, and he'll, he's able to see the blocking in front. But isn't that one of the reasons that the Ibacks from Nebraska have had a problem when they've come into the National Football League, from being so far back? It's a theory that I have, yes. If someone is about eight I knew I heard it somewhere. I heard it from you. That's right. We'll get into that All story right. as we develop this afternoon's <laughs> game. The pitch is to Brinson. And you got whistles every place. Right, well, they, that, but see that official that came over with that call? That's Buddy Comer. We were in college together, University of Arkansas. He was a great college football player for the Razorbacks. We have a dead ball. Illegal procedure by the offense. Lined up in the neutral zone. First down. There's Buddy. Second down. Put on a little weight since then. <laughs> Haven't we all? Oh, no, no, no. no, no. <laughs> His son, Walt, also is an official. And in the Navy-Arkansas game in Little Rock, they worked together as a linesman and a line judge. And I think it's the first time in a, in a major college game that you've had a father-son combination. And Wendell Shelton, who's the referee here, also worked that ball game. Can you wave? Just notice how I've weaved that in so cleverly. Had trouble getting the Tom Osborne story in, but I got to say. <laughs> Here's Taylor. And he has to Keith Jones. 36 yards. Waddell Hackett makes the tackle and he celebrates. And he should celebrate. Odell Haggins right on the nose. Again, fighting with it's really like chicken fighting inside that Charlie. He's being held all over by number 68, Jake Young. That's not, you know. <laughs> that should be a penalty. That's a misdemeanor when you when you hold somebody that bad. <laughs> Odell Haggins does a fine nose tackle, but he will be a linebacker next season. the ball. Birch 
shoots, pulling him down, and that'll be intentional grounding. Uh, Taylor is going to complain about this, but the officials have to make this call based on intent. There's no way that Steve Taylor could have seen the receiver downfield. Shelton Thompson, number 93, is all over him, but take a look at it. Taylor will throw the football without knowing. He has no way of knowing where the receiver is. <laughs> I think intent I, I is, think, is the choice. In, 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 I, think, uh, I think you could title that replay intent. Bart shoots number 98 also. Foul. That was an eligible receiver oh, 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 in the area. It is. It's going to be fourth down. <laughs> there was an eligible, I agree, that's what I said, there was an eligible receiver in the area, but Taylor had no idea that he was there. <laughs> he didn't know he was there. Deion Saunders, the return man. John Crooker is the kicker. Here he is. He's been kicking. Wind has not been a factor here today. A 37-yard average as long as 43. A little under his 39.7-yard uh, average for the regular season. This is only the second time this year that uh, Nebraska has played on Rio Grande. And the other time was here also against Arizona State. That's right. They defeated Arizona State earlier in the season on this very field, 35 to 28. Now they got it right. They, had a they got to bring it back up to the line of scrimmage because since there was an eligible receiver, yeah. it is just an incomplete pass. And they put the flag back. That's what they're doing. No, as long as there's an eligible receiver over there, whether you know it or not, even though you're in tip. <laughs> Anyway, John Croker's going to get Man of a knuckleball. And here is Sanders. Out to the 42, maybe the 43 yard, and only a 31 yard kick with a 10 yard return. We have 5.16. Time remaining. We're in the third quarter here at the 17th edition of the Sun Kiss Fiesta Bowl. We'll be back in just a moment. not Sun Devil Stadium, but this is. It's a gorgeous day here in Tippy, Arizona. The Sun Kiss Fiesta Bowl. Danny McManus. He goes deep, has a man, and overthrows him. Ron Lewis, just a step behind. Lorenzo Hicks had the coverage. Johnny, they can't let him sit back there and throw the football at will. Nebraska is going to have to come off of that five-man front that they use, start blitzing the linebacker, getting more pressure on McManus. He's able to pick them apart. Those numbers are tremendous for the third quarter. 236 yards. Woo. Second down and 10 at the 43. It's Florida State 24, Nebraska 21. Just over five minutes to go, third quarter. Edgar Bennett, ball carrier, he goes to the 47-yard line. And it'll be third down and six as Neil Smith makes the tackle. And of course, as always, it's a tradition. We start the New Year's here on NBC with the Fiesta Bowl. Last year, uh, we delayed it to February the 2nd for that game. Then it's on to Dick Enberg and Merlin Olsen at the Rose Bowl for the granddaddy. And then down to Miami for the Orange Bowl, the battle for number one. Don Cricky, Bob Trumpet will be in the booth. McManus goes deep, it is high, it is incomplete. It will be fourth down. Herb Gaynor, the intended receiver. Charlie, that time Nebraska sent Steve Forch, number 38, the linebacker. They are trying to get out of that rhythm. McManus has got to get sacked. Let's take a look at the blocking. Pat Tomberlin, number 72, against Smith. He tries to go inside him over the top, but that is some great offensive blocking on the part of Tomberlin. Now, here it is from the other side. Forts number 38 is the one who comes to blitz the linebacker, gets inside, and gets to McManus. That's the kind of pressure they're going to need. Now, remember that side of Pat Tomlin in the block. Terrible kick. Five yards. Rick Tootin. Break for Nebraska. They've got the ball when we come back. Here is the punt of Tootin. 
if you're a golfer, you can appreciate oh, yes. this. It slips off the side of the... We call that a shank. That's right. Oh, oh. Just five yards on the kick. Took, by the way, you see his disgusted oh. reaction. Has you a know. national championship yeah. ring. He was the punter for the University That's of right. Miami in 1983 when they won the title. Now, when Nebraska came out at halftime to start the second half, they became a little bit gimmicky in that drive. Well, we said earlier that they don't have the type of yeah. offense that comes back to throw the football and score with it. They only threw two passes the first half. They threw a pass off the wishbone, which they don't normally run, and had a second gimmick play that Statue of Liberty. Now they can go back to a basic offense. Incomplete. Touchdown. One of the three for Nebraska with only one completion in five attempts, and he has been intercepted. Second and ten. Forty-seven yard line. Florida State Territory. Steve Cameron with a tackle. Try to watch the intent of the Florida State uh, defensive people. They want to get after Steve Taylor right now. Force him to keep and hang on to the football. They do a good job of it there. They want him to pitch it when he when when they want him to pitch it, they try to get after him as quickly as possible. The Taylor's got to pitch it when they force him to. He hung on to it that time. He should have gotten rid of it. Third down and seven. <laughs> Setting a double screen, and they're both covered. Taylor goes down the sideline, and the pass is complete. As Morgan Gregory came back to help him, they were setting a double screen on each side, take a pick. Well, defense. Well, there's two choices. That either they were setting a double screen or half the team heard one call and half the team heard the other one because I, I'm not so sure if I've ever seen this play run before. Oh, yes, this, many times. This is just the innovation of Steve Taylor with the presence of mind to find a receiver downfield. 23 yards on the play to the 24-yard line. First down. Tyrese Knox. Four yards to the 20. It'll be second down and six. Dedrick Dodge makes the tackle. Surprisingly, Charlie, they did go to two more gimmick plays. Once again, at the ball at the 50-yard line, down by three points. You go with the offense that brought you here. Just by the presence of Steve Taylor, they complete this pass and put themselves in positions to get back into the game with a field goal or a touchdown. Former announcer, did you see it? <laughs> Ball at the 20-yard line. Second down and six. Five carries for 51 yards for Tyrese Knox. On the year, he rushed 62 times for 428 yards with a 6.9 yard average. Does not and did not have a pass reception. A first down at the 13 yard line. And that's Knox in motion. Lots of time, scrambles back, slips as he makes his cut. So Taylor is down at the line of scrimmage at 13, where it'll be second down and 10. And if Taylor doesn't slip, he had Richard Bell wide open in the corner of the end zone. He was starting to go in that direction. Bell, you see the right half back there? He fakes to it. He goes to the left, and everybody forgets about him. He was starting to look back to that way when he slips and falls down. They mark it to 14, so it is second down and 11. Knox 
his head at the line of scrimmage. His momentum will give him a yard to the 13. Stan Shiver brought him down. It'll be third down and 10. We're moving on the one minute mark. Time remaining in the third quarter. It is Florida State 24, Nebraska 21. Third down and 10. And of course, well within the field goal range of Chris Drennan, who has a 50 yarder this year. The third down and 10, you throw here, then you go for the tie with the field goal attempt if you're unsuccessful with the pass. Fake of the reverse, and it's Taylor. Still on his feet. Steve Taylor. Odell Haggins finally got him on the far side. He needed to go to the three. I don't think he got quite that far, but he almost did it. Sorry, this is just really the option. What they do is they bring the wing back around back Brinson, and he's able to use him as he normally does the eye back. The fake reverse just takes the. Now watch the push by Brinson. Well, that's that's illegal. You can't you can't aid a running back. The officials don't yeah, they don't see it. Don't make the call. So it's fourth down, and about half a yard to go for the first down. To stay the field goal attempt for the tie with 43 seconds to go in the third. They're going for it. They got a touchdown. was set up by the five-yard punt of Rick Tootin. The extra point attempt is good. And Nebraska has taken the lead 28 to 24. This is Charlie Jones, Jimmy Cephalo, along with Chris Drennan, number 16 for Nebraska, who will kick off. And Dexter Carter, number 13, Keith Ross, number 20 for Florida State, set to return. If it goes into the end zone and hits, it's an automatic it's dead ball and it's automatic touchback. They'll bring it out to the 20 yard line. All right, that of course is different than the pros, Gerardo. When the hits like that, you can jump on it uh, in the pro ranks. Here's the look at the replay. Heibel number 48 with a good block on Palmer. That's what opened it up. In order to run this power eye formation, you've got to have a great blocking fullback. He's really another lineman in the backfield. Watch him, 48 Heibel making the big block against Palmer. That opens up the big hole for Knox to get into the end zone. Charlie, a little surprising on fourth and one, however down by yeah. three points not to go for the field goal. Florida State from their own 20 yard line first down. Tyrese Knox scoring the touchdown. He had three touchdowns during the regular season. And here it comes Florida State from their own 20 yard line. Dexter Carter. A yard to the 21. It'll be second down and nine as Jeff Jamrog makes the tackle for Nebraska. Twenty-five second clock has just started, so the game clock in reality is underneath it. So that Florida State could just let it run out without another play. They may want to take another play here. As we have seven seconds and counting left to go in the third quarter. Incomplete going to Dexter Carter. With that play, the third quarter comes to a close. At the end of the third, the score, Nebraska 28, Florida State 24. We'll be right back after these messages from your local station. The week of the Sun Kiss Fiesta Bowl is always very special with so many events, including the Fiesta Ball Bowl. I am Kelvin Vic Damone entertaining us from 1400 the other night, the kickoff luncheon of 5,000. Here's McManus going to the 30-yard line. It will be close to the first down. It just touches the chalk mark. Pat Carter, the receiver. T. Forge was there. And it will be a first down. 
You don't bring the change out in this case. Remember, there was a touchback, and so they start from the 20, so you know if it touches the chalk on the 30 that you've got it. The parade yesterday, Dennis Connor, the grand marshal of the parade, was pretty been an exciting week here in the Valley of the Sun. Mike Murray for the defense. Jeff Jamrog was also there, but it was Murray who made the hit, number 74, through three quarters. Well, the passing yards of Nebraska, 71 yards, that was all during that third quarter. McManus continues to have the big day with the 236 on his side of the ledger, and Nebraska coming back with time of possession as the third quarter concludes. Loss of a yard, second and 11 at the 29. McManus, and it is caught. Dossie with a 17-yard reception. Blazik brings him down. But McManus is an underrated quarterback, Jordan. I got to tell you, he can play professional football. He's a, a straight drop back pass, but watch the touch over the linebacker inside and just in front of Blazek, the safety. Very few people can do that. Look at the zone set up all the way across the field, right at the 45. Three Nebraska players. Now here comes the receiver inside. And McManus has the touch to get it over the linebacker ATN in front of Blazek. Great throw. First down at the 45. McManus over the middle, and it is dropped. Herb Gaynor, who has scored two touchdowns, would just juggle it and couldn't find the handle. That's so frustrating as a receiver, isn't it? Because you know it's there. You just can't get to it. Well, especially when you're someone like Herb Gaynor, who, who has very good hands. He catches the ball extremely well. That is very uncharacteristic of him. Certain receivers, it's more than frustrating. It's a label that you get if you can't catch it. But Herb Gaynor does not have that label. He has a good set of hands. You had a good set of hands. That's about it, though. <laughs> <laughs> hey, we start with the positive. McManus, 21 of 40. He's throwing for 261 yards, two touchdowns, one interception. <laughs> Another one. Peters, he let two get away. And Charles Fryer. And that's how, all label, that's how all label comes about, though, Charlie. He could have caught 50 oh. passes in a row. Yeah. He drops two in a row, and people will remember that. Herb Gaynor is a senior who will be drafted this year. He's tall, lanky, not great speed, but the book on him is he does catch the football very well. And what I liked about McManus, though, is he came right back to him. Yeah. That shows the confidence that McManus has in the receiver. He always liked that. If you go out and drop a pass, I always wanted them to come right back to me so I could prove it. Now Herb Gaynor's got to go to the sideline for a while and think about two drops in a row. We've got a flag, and here's the call. Holding by the offense. Penalty is declined. It will be third down. So it'll be third down and 10. Right side of your line, Pat Tomberlin, number 72. Is he the one who was called for holding? Well, he's got a hold of uh, Ray of Valadeo. He's got a hold of him pretty well. I don't know if that's where the flag came from. Of course, the college ranks, they don't announce the, uh, the one who's guilty. You notice he in the shot of Pat Tamberlin, number 72. That's O'Malley in motion. Incomplete. Terry Anthony was coming back for it. Couldn't get to it. Brian Washington was right behind him. It'll be fourth down. in the Florida Citrus Bowl is Clemson 35, Penn State 10. And in the Cotton Bowl in the third quarter, Texas A&M pulling away from Notre Dame 25 to 10. And here it is, Nebraska 28. Oh, excuse me, Sugar Bowl. Auburn 7 and Syracuse nothing in the first quarter. As Tootin kicks here. And Richard Bell has the return. As he comes across the 25 to around the 27-yard line, a 38-yard kick and a 10-yard return. 28-24, Nebraska leads by four. This 1988 Sunkiss Fiesta Bowl is being brought to you by the Sunkiss family of products, where you can be sure of the highest quality every time you have our word on it. By Apple Computer. 
maker of Macintosh personal computers, giving you the power to be your best. By the heartbeat of America, today's Chevy truck, and by John Hancock Financial Services, real life, real answer. Nebraska at their own 26-yard line, leading 28-24. 12.39 left to go here in the 17th edition of the Sunkiss Fiesta Bowl. Tyrese Knox to the 32-yard line and a flag is down. Thomas Harp making the tackle. And Florida State is offside. Bobby Bowden, the head coach of Florida State. 6-3 and 1 in bowl games. And they have such different styles, Tom Osborne and Bobby Bowden. Tom Osborne. The defense is offside. We'll repeat first down, five yard penalty. And that is the first penalty against Florida State in the ballgame. Tom Osborne seems to be such a quiet young yes, man. Like a riverboat gambler, yeah, though, when you get him exactly. in the ballgame. Because when you, when you think about the special he plays, remember Fumble Ruski? Yes. He has that basic offense. He runs the power, uh, the power formations. He likes the option. Then all of a sudden, he comes up with something very unusual. With the penalty, it's first down and five. Tyrese Knox. He's going to lose two to the 29, so it's going to be second down and seven as Kevin Grant makes the tackle. Well, McGowan, the Butkus Award winner. Let's take a look at him. Good speed. He's the one who causes this. He runs into another All-America. John McCormick forces number 29, Brian Carpenter, to clog up the hole, and uh, Knox unable to get any yardage. McGowan, though, a surprise winner of the Butkus. He, uh, Chris Spillman of Ohio State was a leading candidate for so long, but McGowan with a tremendous year came in one year old. Here's Taylor and his throw. The pass is complete to Todd Milliken. And Nebraska is near the 50-yard line. A gain of 20 yards on the play. They'll mark it the 49. And it's a first down for the Cornhuskers. Milliken, they really use two tight ends. They use Milliken and Banderas. Milliken, the better receiver of the group. Taylor with the rollout, and uh, Milliken finding a hole in the middle of the zone. Big play for Nebraska They're up to the 49-yard line. Taylor on the option. And he will go for two, maybe three yards. They'll mark it out on the far side. From the other side, Charlie, take a look at it now. Taylor hangs on to the football. Option quarterbacks have to have it out in front of him to get ready for the pitch, but watch what happens at the end of this play. He's not tucking the ball away. He's got to get it back in right now because, boom, it pops out. Yeah. Very easy to fumble the football as an option quarterback. You have to keep it out in front of you. 47-yard line of Florida State. A gain of four, so it is second down and six. going to be third down is still a couple to go for the first down. Nebraska with the ball leading by four 28 24. You know we talked about the eye backs in Nebraska about seven yards deep in the backfield that works when you're running this power eye in college you're able to see the block in front of you but when you go to the pro ranks you think about the great eye back Nebraska have had. I am hip Jarvis Redwine they usually do not do well in the pro rank that's because they're three yards closer to the line of scrimmage. Mike Rozier now he's made it but it's taken him quite a while to develop he may have been the best of the ball. On third down, Tyrese Knox gets the call. And we may have a measurement here. We talked about a couple of the officials uh, in the ballgame. We might give a rundown of all the officials. Uh, Wendell Shelton, the umpire's Joe Darden. We talked about Buddy Coleman. Roger Rogers is the line judge. Bo Hicks. Tim Millis and Ron Murphy. They've done a very good, they've really done a good job. Very quiet as, as uh, well as Sheldon told us yesterday, he'd like to do the game walk away. Nobody even know the officials were involved. There have been a lot of flags. Now with the measurement. 
First down. When you think about this offense in Nebraska, though, Charlie, you do think about those like those great high backs. Yeah. They've, they've had a lot of them. Why is it such a difference? Why does three or four yards? Why does it make that much? Of a because you've you got to make a. By the way, let me stop you. Don't forget the Rose Bowl, the granddaddy of them all. USC and Michigan State. That'll be right after our ball game. We'll be going right there. We'll get back to that. Yeah, notice here, Perkins, how far back the high back is. He doesn't carry here, but he's really back. Like a high roll, this is that. He goes to the 36 yard line. Now, it's go a, ahead, Mr. Cephalo. It's a big adjustment because you have that you have not only three yards less to look at the blocking in front of you, you have a lot less time to develop the blocking in front of you. Uh, conversely, look at the fullbacks Nebraska's had who have been successful in the pros. Andre Franklin with the Dolphins before that knee injury, he was on his way to quite a career. And Tom Rath, but yeah. now with uh, the 49ers is having quite a career. They're closer to the line of scrimmage, the adjustment is great. Second and five. Taylor may pick up the first down here. He needs to go to the 31-yard line. It looks as if he has that. And he does. Steve Taylor with 16 carries, and he has scored the touchdown. You see his numbers on the day, Charlie. We mentioned earlier a year ago when they played against Florida State, he had 140 yards rushing. So Florida State has been able to keep him from carrying the football, making him pitch it. However, they have not stopped Nebraska from scoring 28 points. Danny McManus on the sidelines, the quarterback of Florida State. Tyree Knott. Second down and eight. Now Nebraska beginning to chip away at the clock. We're moving on the nine-minute mark, time remaining in the ballgame. Well, that's what they do best, Charlie. They run the option. They run that power sweep. They'll do it all day long until uh, Florida State forces them to get out of it. And under the circumstances, with 8.55 left and up by four points, there's no need for Tom Osborne to go back to uh, some of those gimmicks as he tried earlier on with the Statue of Liberty and that uh, pass by off of the wishbone formation, which they don't normally use. Prince the motion man. Steve Taylor pulled down inside the 20 yard line, but not before he picks up the first down. Dedrick Dodge with the tackle. And they picked the perfect time to run this quarterback draw, Charlie. Florida State had the blitz going, and Taylor came right up inside of it. He didn't drop a two or three yards back. And the clock continues to move. Now 8.27. And a first down at the Florida State 19-yard line. There's the wishbone. Has a man all alone on the right side to throw to, but Stanley decides to run to the 15 and is out of bounds after a gain of nine yards. But he had a receiver wide open on the right side. You remember when they hit the, the tight end over the middle of the field earlier on, the first pass that, that Taylor completed on the day? That's exactly what they ran. This is the wishbone. They don't normally have it. It's confusing Florida State's defense. He fakes the cross buck action. Now look at the receiver in the corner of the end zone. That's Banderas. He is wide open, but Taylor decides to run it instead and picks up some good yardage. Keith Jones was also open in the, in the short flat on the right side. And it's second down and one. Taylor has rushed now. For 68 yards. Tyrese Knox. He picks up the first down. Seven yard line. It's going to be first down and goal to go for Nebraska. Bobby Bob is going to have to do some gambling on defense down here, Charlie, at the seven yard line. Down by four points, they score and go in with eight minutes left in the contest, and he's going to have his hands full. They're going to do some blitzing down here, some stunning by the defensive line to try to stop this power running game of Nebraska. First and goal at the seven. And Taylor cuts to the three. Second down, goal to go. Anthony Moss and Eric Hayes with the tackle for Florida State. Here's Taylor on that option. 
And then the, once again, it's the block by Heibel, number 48, that set that up for him. Heibel is, is, is one of the underrated uh, members of this Nebraska team. He's the key to their offense because he's got to be able to block to run the option and to run the power sweep. He does it very well. They mark at the two-yard line where it's second down and goal to go. Fumble. Knox fumbles the ball and Florida State has it. Eric Hayes has the fumble recovery. Well, that's what Bobby Bowden's defense had to do. They had to gamble a little bit, send a couple of people to stop that running attack. They picked the right hole this time to send the blitzing linebacker. And Knox unable to hang on to it. For the Seminoles, two fumble recoveries and an interception. They've got the ball, and we'll be back. Nebraska just had the ball for 14 plays. They moved 72 yards, and then they turned it over. Here's McManus from the end zone. And it is incomplete to Ronald Lewis. It'll be second down and 10 at the three-yard line. Let's go back, Johnny, and look at the fumble. Tyrese Knox coughs it up down in close. Haggins, number 53, he's the nose tackle. See him get underneath the center. He causes all that trouble in there. They've got all the force coming up. And Tyrese Knox was not able to jump over the pile. Young was forced back into the backfield. And that prevented him from jumping, and that's why he lost the ball. Terry Anthony checks into the offensive set. He's a late arrival. There's Eric Hayes. And Tyrese Knox, the man who found it. Second and 10. Pass complete at the 11 yard line to Terry Anthony, and he's brought down by Leroy Etienne. Anthony, however, will not have enough yards for the first down. Dangerous. Uh, McManus throwing from deep within his own end zone. Seven step drop. That's very dangerous from in tight. But nice catch by Anthony. However, though, he comes up about uh, two yards short of the first down. Third down three. Why is it dangerous to drop back that far? Well, if you're going against Nebraska, it's because they've got that very strong rush. Now, he's not been sacked often, but you usually go with a three-step drop that deep in the end zone. Complete first down. Ronald Lewis at the 19. Gain of nine. Well, let's take a look at it once again. Let's see his drop this time. Is he into the end zone? Yeah. Well, right at, right at the corner of it. But he's, he's got so much presence there inside of the defensive end. And over the linebacker in front of Jackson, number four. And I tell you, Danny McManus can play football. He can be a National Football League player. He's, he's only 6'1". They say that's the knock, but uh, I he think he's still good. Yeah. Five minutes and 50 seconds left to go in the game. It is deep, tip, almost intercepted. Tim Jackson with the play. Sammy Smith, the intended receiver. It'll be second down and 10, back at the 19-yard line. The crowd here today at the 17th edition of the Sunkiss Fiesta Bowl enjoying this play. Sammy Smith doesn't look back to the quarterback. Watch him. He's running down the field. Now he looks back around for it. And as a result, Jackson almost comes in and sneaks back and grabs the football. Sometimes if you're a receiver, and you're not going to be able to catch it. You've got to go up and play defensive back. Smith did not do it that time. The crowd here, the third largest in Sunkiss Fiesta Bowl history, 72,112. McManus with a screen. Dexter Carter. Carter to the 30, comes down at the 34, has the first down. In order for a screen to be successful, you've got to have someone who can be an actor. Carter, Dexter Carter, this play. Watch how he acts. Now, okay, now that, that big fool there. Now I'm going to sit here for a while. I'm not going to. And now he sneaks back out and catches the football. That's some great acting ability. And he actually gets knocked down by Jason Kuyper's number 62, his own guard. The right tackle for Florida State. You've seen him a couple of times in replay. He's the big man, Pat Tomberlin. Bobby Bowden says he weighs 300 pounds. He said that's round numbers because he's the round man. He's on the right side. See? Right there. It's complete. Terry Anthony. 45-yard line of Nebraska, 20 yards. Hicks and Fryer with the tackle. And Florida State has taken Gaynor out of the out of the contest. Herb Anthony in to replace him. Remember, Gaynor dropped two passes earlier on that he should have come up with. But there, Terry Anthony proving to be a, quite a quite a replacement. Okay. 
Jeff Mills now in a defensive left end for Broderick Thomas. McMahon is 25 of 48, 314 yards, two touchdowns, one interception, most attempts in a game this year. He's on target. Carter, he'll score. Yes, you got to love it. No, they're going to say he stepped out at the two. You don't have to love it so much. Well, that official did put his arms up in the touchdown, then changed his mind right at the last second. Tim Jackson and Jeff Jamrock were there for the defense. They're going to mark it the two yards. That play is completely on Danny McManus. He had a receiver down the sideline who curled inside. McManus looked at him. There he is to the left of your screen, and that allowed Dexter Carter to sneak by the defense. Now, let's see where he does step out. Yeah, he, he sure does. does. And there's the official goes up with his arms first, and then comes back in. Let's see where he goes out. Right. Oh, yeah, no question yeah. about that. Well, I don't know, Charlie. He looked like he got in. Football broke the plane. He was still airborne. He sure was. First down, goal to go. Not there. Good defensive play. That's Charles Fryer. And you look, of course, for 34 Wham. The power run by Dane Williams. And that is it. However, that is, what a hit by the part of the defense that did not work that time. One, just a second time all season long with that play, 34 Wham, does not work for Florida State. Loses a yard to the three. Second down goal to go. Let's try it on the right side this time. There's Carter. He's not going to make it. Now the margin is four points. A field goal doesn't help seconds left. Leroy Etienne along with Tim Rother. They were set up for the land, Charlie, for the second time in a row. They went away from it, thinking that Nebraska, looking at the films, knowing how successful it is, and we've got a flag. And we've got a penalty State. against Florida State. And that will be only their second penalty. In the ballgame. Oh, there's the kick. That's yeah, why that's the call is. Yeah, it. Dexter Carter. Dead ball. Personal foul. Offense. And Nebraska has, third down. Nebraska has only been penalized three times. He didn't see it underneath, but it was a good call by the officials. So the ball comes out to the 18-yard line. And it's a dead ball foul, so it'll be third down. Dead ball foul after the play. I tell you, that is the biggest play of the football game thus yes. far. Dead ball fall on the part of Dexter yes. Carter. They, you know, you've got to, you have a shot at third and three. Third and goal from the three-yard line. Now they've got to come up with a play from the 18. Third and goal from the 18, and Florida State wants a timeout. We have 3.51 left in the game, and Nebraska leads by four, 28-24. He's not going to kick a field goal whether or, not, whether or not he's successful on the first play or not. They're down by four points with just 3.51 left to go in the contest. They've got to come up with two plays because they can use both plays to get into the end zone. Third and goal at the 18. It's a screen. Carter went up for it and pulled it down at the 15-yard line. It'll be fourth down and goal to go at the 15. And Broderick Thomas back in the ball game makes the top, makes the stop. McManus has set a Fiesta Bowl passing record of 357 yards. Does that still stand? 357. The old record was 347. and goal. In zone, touchdown! <laughs> A 97-yard drive!
It started with a fumble recovery back at the three-yard line. Extra point attempt. It's good. The reaction of Tom Osborne of Nebraska. 31-28, Florida State. Finds the receiver, Ronald Lewis, inside. There's no safety in the middle of the field, number 47. That's ATN. He's a linebacker. Nebraska, a mistake on the coverage, but Bobby Bowden will take it. Lewis, four receptions, 62 yards, and a touchdown. McManus now 28 of 51, 375 yards, three touchdowns, one interception. It's a new Fiesta Bowl record. The other one was set 17 years ago by Gary Hopp with 347. He played for Florida State. It's Super Bowl one. Super Bowl one, Fiesta Bowl one. Ripson will down it in the end zone. Did I say Super Bowl? Well, I did, didn't I? I really got excited. <laughs> the other uh, unusual thing is you take a look at the Florida State people and thrill. He's thrown 51 times today. The highest amount of passes he's thrown this season was 34 coming into today's contest. All right, let's see what Nebraska can do. Three minutes and seven seconds. Charlie coming back again. They like the option of the power run. Uh, power sweep they can still go to it the 307 plenty of time they've got three timeouts remaining Taylor with time pass is complete Gregory caught it they're going to place the ball on the 20 yard line so that'll be a first down Deion Sanders with the, the you don't throw at Sanders that much. I'm surprised that they're going at his side because he's such a good cover man. He's the best cover uh, man in college football today. He's, he's a very lonely man over on that yeah. corner because they, they simply want to throw to the other side. He's that good of a man-to-man -man coverage guy. One of three candidates for the Jim Thorpe Award that will be decided later this month. Taylor over the middle. Pass is complete. Todd Milliken. And the Cornhuskers are on the move. They sure are, Charlie, and they are in a position to go to what they do well. I mean, nobody's going to complain about Taylor throwing the football. He's done it well the last yeah. two plays. But if Coach Osborne decides to go back to the running attack with 2.47 and three timeouts, he can. They only need a field goal to tie this game up. First down at the 42. Flag is down. Another flag is down. Pass is complete. Gregory down the sideline. 20. 10. Buffed out of bounds inside the five, but there were two flags. It goes to the two if it holds. 55 yards. And the problem is Nebraska didn't have enough people on the line of scrimmage. They'll bring it back. In fact, I think it's Morgan Gregory, the outside receiver, who did not get up on the football. The official threw the flag immediately. We have illegal formation by the offense. Five-yard penalty. Repeat. First down. A five-yard penalty. In reality, a 60-yard penalty. That's right. The, the receiver's got to be on the line of scrimmage. He was on the split side of the field. He was actually not covering up the inside tackle. It's an illegal formation. First down and 50. Taylor has completed five of nine. He's thrown for 113 yards. And he'll be throwing here his pressure. He gets it off at his tip that is incomplete. Thomas Harp was there for the Seminole. It'll be second down and 15. What a ball game. It's really been a great ball game. And we have two more in store for you as we go on to the Rose Bowl and then to the Orange Bowl. Tana, Thomas Harp, number 58, coming out, out to holding, it looked like, his hamstring. Until that miss, Taylor had four completions in a row. Tom Osborne, the head coach of, the head coach of Nebraska. And Bobby Bowden, the head coach of Florida State. And he's taking off the headsets. He's, <laughs> he's going to watch this one. 
Keith Jones. 41 yard line. It's going to be third down and 10. Steve Bowden and Tom Osborne. Third down and 10. First down. Gregory has it at the 42 yard line of Florida State. 18 yards. Eric Williams with the tackle. And Osborne is trying to get them up to the line of scrimmage as quickly as possible. And they coming out of the huddle right now. Here's a look at it, the little rollout on the part of Taylor. And Gregory, the one who made the mistake being on the wrong position, not on the line of scrimmage earlier, comes back and makes the big first down. Taylor's in trouble. He's throwing this one away. Yeah. And now the people on the Florida State, they're saying, wait a minute. Where are we? <laughs> they dropped There's a flag. They dropped it. They dropped it. Yes. Yes. I mean, he was he was trying to reach about the eighth row. Didn't quite make it. <laughs> Don't do that. He's normally such a quiet yes, man oh, yeah. on the sideline. What a quiet demeanor. Intentional grounding of the ball by the offense. Loss of down. It will be second down. If you can compare the two coaches, uh, Osborne reminds me a little of Raymond Berry. Such a quiet young man. And of course, Bobby Bowden, he's like Hank Strambles on the sideline. He's the general. He's ready to do business. He talks to everybody. the 34 yard line it's there Chip had a man in between and he tried oh and ever so close to them being intercepted and they're going after Deion Sanders and he makes the play right they try to fit it in between Deion Sanders number two the cornerback and Leroy Butler number six the safety see he turns him loose he Sanders turns him loose to the second man but He's got such incredible makeup speed, he's able to come back and knock that ball away. That's not his play. That's the play of Leroy Butler, number six. But Sanders has the best makeup speed of any defensive back I have seen playing in college football today. Third and 25. 143 left. Great composure. Now he throws. And his receiver fell down. was down around the 30-yard line. We have an illegal forward pass. He was past the line of scrimmage. Uh, he trips himself, though. He kicked himself with his back foot. And lost a down. Lost down. <laughs> he's, he's doing business. He he's involved. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Five-yard penalty on the loss of down. He was past the line of scrimmage when he threw the ball. We've got a timeout with 1.33 left. Florida State three for the game. Right, the coaching staff of uh, Florida State are telling their players, you stand back there about 20 yards, they don't let anybody throw the ball behind you. And I tell you, if they complete this, flat, this pass, Bobby Bowden will quit coaching at Florida State. They've got somebody very deep in the middle of the field. And Deion Sanders, to the wide side of the field, is the deep man. He just drops it off. Heibel, Heibel to the 40, the 43-yard line, way, way short of what he needed for the first down. And Florida State will take over on downs, needing now only to run a minute and 19 seconds off of the clock. I tell you, Charlie, I think Odell Hagen should have second thoughts about not playing that nose tackle position anymore. He was all over Steve Taylor with a good rush. And we've got a flag down on the field. Yes, we do. We've got a flag at the 37-yard line. We have a dead ball. Unsportsmanlike conduct foul against the defense. A sportsmanlike kind of call against Nebraska. He pointed to Nebraska, but he said defense. 
Well, because it was a dead ball fall, dead ball technically foul. they were. They, they were already balls. they'd already taken over a defense. That's what it was. So it's against the rest. So the ball is at the 27-yard line of Nebraska. First down for Florida State, leading 31-28. They trailed after the first quarter, 14 to nothing. Led at halftime, 21-14. Trail after three, 28-24. And McManus will just slide down. And we'll have a flag. Now there's a reason for that flag, and that is with a personal foul by Nebraska just a moment ago. They don't want to stop. They know to stop it right now. And the officials not going to let the last minute and 13 seconds of this game get away. I like that kind of a call. Offense. That's no, against the First offense. Down. Now he made a mistake on this. That is no. against Nebraska. It, you know, it seemed like uh, McManus was down no. and somebody came in with a helmet. No. It's against Nebraska. And they'll take it down to the 18-yard line. Florida State with a timeout remaining. Nebraska with two. Moving on the one-minute mark time remaining. And Florida State really does not have to. They, the rest with just two timeouts left, Florida State could just sit on the football. Five seconds of the 25-second clock. Bennett. Edgar Bennett to the 10. Edgar Bennett. And Charlie, I think it's an unnecessary handoff at this at this juncture. Clock running down, just take it, sit back now, and let Nebraska use the remaining timeout, and the football game is over. And why is Nebraska not calling timeout? Are our statistics incorrect? Do they still have two timeouts? According to the scoreboard, they do. This is shocking. I am amazed. As the countdown just continues. See, even though they couldn't stop it toward the end of the game, you never know if somebody's going to trip or slip or fall down. I think you use your timeouts. I'm very surprised by that. So we come to a close of the 17th edition of the Fiesta Bowl. The Budweiser outstanding players of today's game for Florida State, number 14, Danny McManus, who sets a Fiesta Bowl record of 375 yards. And for the Nebraska Cornhuskers, Leroy Etienne with an outstanding defensive effort. Bud Budweiser will donate a total of $2,000 to the general scholarship funds of Nebraska and of Florida State. The final score once again at the Sunkiss Fiesta Bowl, Florida State 31, Nebraska 28. For Jimmy Cephalo, I'm Charlie Jones. Happy New Year's, everybody, and a special thanks to Fiesta Bowl President Alex Crutchfield, Associate Executive Director John Junker, Executive Director Bruce Skinner. 31-28, Florida State wins it. So long, everybody.